I'm going to show you how to download the VRO server software. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Bavork. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. Start now by subscribing and click the bell so that you don't miss a thing. If you already have VRL's orchestrator deployed in your environment, please feel free to take a look at the playlist and perhaps jump ahead two or three videos. Because in this video and the next two videos, we're going to take a look at the entire process of setting up VRL's orchestrator. When you set up VRL's orchestrator, actually before you even begin, there's a decision that you need to make, which is whether you want to run the standalone version of VRLIZE Orchestrator or the embedded version of VRLIZE Orchestrator. And when we say embedded, we mean specifically embedded into your VRA appliance. Now, the Orchestrator server in both cases, whether you're doing standalone or embedded, it's the same Orchestrator server. It comes with the same workflows and is essentially the same. Uh, on the other hand, um, some of the practical differences between the two are um, with the standalone orchestrator server, you do not have to purchase vRealize uh, automation. Um, you will need a vCenter server license in order to license your vCenter server, excuse me, your VRO server. But with the standalone server, you don't have to purchase a bunch of um, additional VMware products. On the other hand, if you use the embedded orchestrator server, the one that's embedded into vRealize automation, the two have been very tightly integrated with each other. And as a result, if you deploy vRealize Automation, you will have automatically deployed vRealize Orchestrator in addition to VRA. So for this portion of the video series, I am going to show you how to set up a standalone Orchestrator server. And the reason why I'm choosing that is to make this um, portion of the videos as widely accessible as possible. I, I realize that um, not every person who's going to be viewing these videos is necessarily going to have uh, ESXi and vCenter and vSphere and VRA and so forth. So I'm intentionally showing you a standalone deployment in order to reduce uh, the costs involved. I'm making some assumptions here. I'm assuming that if you're watching this video to see how to set up your orchestrator server, I'm going to assume that you know what my learn, excuse me, not my learn, my.vmware.com is. So if you've never gone there, go to my.vmware.com in your web browser. And one of the first things you're going to notice is it's going to ask you to log in with your credentials. If you don't already have an account, you can create an account. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't have an account, it's entirely possible that one of your coworkers at your company or organization, it's entirely possible that one of your coworkers already has your company's credentials for my.vmware.com. And you should actually go to them because presumably their credentials um, will get you into an account that has the, the necessary privileges to download the software that we're about to download. That's, that's the whole point in this video. That's the whole point of my.vmware.com is that's where you're going to go to download the orchestrator server software. So again, I'm assuming you've got the credentials. If not, go, go, go get them. I'm going to assume also that you already have at least one ESXi host set up and that you have your vCenter server up and running. Uh, strictly speaking, you could do what we're about to do with just a single ESXi host and without even using a vCenter server, but life's going to be a lot easier for you if you have uh, one or more ESXi hosts and a vCenter server. Additionally, I'm assuming that your DNS is properly configured. If your DNS is not properly configured, uh, that's going to cause challenges for you with VRI's Orchestrator and so many other parts of your IT infrastructure. So go make certain that DNS is configured properly. Uh, for instance, in this lab environment where I'm going to be showing you the demo, uh, I have configured DNS so that it has an A record and a pointer record for my Orchestrator server that we're about to install. So I've already created a, an entry in DNS for a machine called SA-VRO-01. And additionally, um, it doesn't just have the, 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 the name, it also has the IP address and so forth. So go configure your DNS and while you're at it, make certain that you've got your NTP 
uh, configuration set up correctly. Perhaps it's not your NTP server, maybe use some external NTP server, but um, before you go into this process here, it's important that you have at least one IP address that you can supply that is an NTP server because orchestrator needs to be um, time synced with vCenter and um, potentially VRA and other things. So get yourself set up with NTP. Okay, this slide here is effectively giving you a, a blow by blow overview of what we're gonna be doing in this video, the next video, and the video after that. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to download the OVA file that contains the orchestrator server. If you've never encountered an OVA file, they're used to deploy virtual appliances. Uh, virtual appliances are deployed in a very consistent manner. So if you've ever deployed one OVA, this is going to be a breeze for you. If you've never deployed from an OVA, don't worry, I'll show you exactly how to do it. In the following video, I'll show you how to deploy orchestrator from that OVA file. And in the video after that, I'll show you how to configure your orchestrator server. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. Let's go to the lab environment. What do we need to do? Well, the first thing that we need to do is to go to my.vmware.com. Again, the reason why we're going to my.vmware.com is because that's where we're going to download the software that we need to install Orchestrator. So I've already gone to my.vmware.com. Uh, as you can see, the URL has redirected to this long, crazy thing. You'll just go to my.vmware.com. And when you go there, in the top right-hand corner, there's a link to click on in order to log in to my.vmware.com. So I'm going to type my login credentials here. And I'll click the sign in button. Uh, notice, by the way, if you don't have an account, you can sign up for an account by clicking on this link here. But I've got my credentials. I'm going to click sign in. And as you can see, when you go into my.vmware.com, it lets you do lots of different things. But for right now, what we're concerned with is this section here titled product downloads. Let's go there. So we click on product downloads. And here in product downloads, you can see loads of different VMware products. Uh, thankfully, the place we need to go is right here. Now, earlier I, in this video, I mentioned that we're going to do the standalone deployment of vRealize Orchestrator. Uh, obviously, if you are deploying an embedded Orchestrator server uh, in conjunction with vRealize Automation, that's the product that you would look for here. If you're going to do embedded, you look for vRealize Automation, you download that software, you install it, and as part of installing VRA, will uh, get VRO automatically installed. But that's not the path we've chosen here. We've chosen the path of installing a standalone orchestrator server. So to get the software for that, you'll go to vSphere. You'll click on View Download Components. And you'll notice that for each of the different license editions of vSphere, there's a different section. So for instance, maybe you have vSphere Essentials or vSphere Essentials Plus or standard or enterprise or enterprise plus there's lots of different editions what we're going to do though is we're going to um, go to the section for the license that you have uh, i'm going to go to enterprise plus and you'll notice there that we have in this case here vmware vrise orchestrator appliance 8.2.0 which was released uh, on tuesday of this week um, when you view this video a year from now obviously there will be a, a, a more modern release than the one that we just released. But we're gonna use Orchestrator 8.2 in this video series. All right, so whether you go here to Enterprise Plus to download VRO 8.2, or you go to Enterprise and you download Orchestrator 8.2, or you go to Standard Orchestrator Appliance 8.2, they're all the same thing, um, doesn't matter which one. So again, I'm going to choose because I usually am working with an Enterprise Plus license. I'm going to go to Enterprise Plus. I'm going to go to VRO Appliance 8.2.0 and I'm going to click on Downloads. And as you can see here, we can choose which version of Orchestrator we want to download. I'm going to go with the latest, which at the time of this recording is 8.2.0. 
uh, notes that there's release notes. Um, I'm not going to take you through that r right now, but I would recommend that you take a look at the release notes to familiarize yourself with what's new with each new version. And additionally, uh, we have different tabs down below, but the one that we're really interested in is the Product Downloads tab, where it tells us that there is an OVA file that we can download in order to get the software to deploy our VRO server. So I'm going to go over to our Download Now button and click Download Now. So I click Download Now, and as you can see, the next thing it's going to do is ask me where I want to store the OVA file. As you can see here on my Windows machine, it's downloading it's defaulting to my downloads folder and you'll notice that I've actually already downloaded this OVA file previously. Uh, that's why it's adding the, the one on here. Um, I'm not actually going to download this again. In fact, I'm going to abort out of here by hitting cancel, but you will, uh, when you do this, see a file name very similar to this. Again, your version number may vary. Uh, your build number may vary also. But whatever file name that it has, you can just save the OVA file using that default name by clicking Save. And um, again, it's roughly three or four gigabytes, so it'll take a little bit of time, depending upon the speed of your download connection. It'll take a little bit of time to download, but it's, it's pretty quick. Again, I've already got it, so I'm going to hit Cancel. You, on the other hand, should click Save. Join me in the next video where I'll show you how to deploy the VRO virtual clients.